Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those that are new, I am Sean, one half of Chicory's Travels, and on this channel we talk about RV-related topics, mostly sharing lessons we've learned along the way. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Also, based on today's topic, it would be great if you would comment below on how you determine if you are safely within your towing limits. Yes, you guessed it, today's video is about knowing how much your vehicle can safely tow. It is a topic I should have learned seven years ago when we bought our first fifth wheel, or even two years ago when we bought our second. Instead, I'm just getting around to learning about this topic, and I figured I would share what I've learned so it will save you time in your research on towing. Or you could always do what I did and buy the biggest truck you could find in your area and figure it should be able to tow any fifth wheel out there. Learning about this topic has taught me that something can be so very simple and at the same time very, very complicated. There are a lot of acronyms and numbers that you have to decipher to figure out if you are within your vehicle's towing limits. So let's get into it. The first thing is where to find the information you need. Here's what I did. I took pictures of the information inside of my driver's side door. I have a 2014 Chevy Silverado 3500 and on my stickers it listed the GVWR, the ratings for each of the axles, and the max weight of all occupants and cargo. And don't worry about not knowing what GVWR is. We're going to get into these acronyms here in a minute. So those are that's one place where you're going to be able to find information is inside of your driver's side door on stickers. Then I looked at the towing guide for that Chevy put out in 2014. And I found it on the internet. And so that listed a bunch more numbers in there that I needed to help me figure out if I was actually towing safely. The last place I retrieved details was by doing a VIN lookup, and each manufacturer has a different way of looking up the VIN to find out all of the technical details of your vehicle. So once you find that out, though, it provides a very detailed uh, report on what is in your vehicle, how much your vehicle can tow, depending on the type of hitch, just a wealth of information that is not provided to you in a regular user's manual or anything like that. So once you have located the details of your vehicle, you need to find the following information. And here's where all the acronyms start flowing. GVWR, this is the gross vehicle weight rating and it is the max amount of weight the vehicle should weigh as equipped and with passengers, cargo, and the tongue weight from whatever you're towing. For my truck, this is 13,025 pounds. The next one you want to know is the Gross Combined Weight Rating, or GCWR. And this is the max total weight of everything combined which is your truck, your passengers, your trailer, and your cargo. For my truck, this was 30,500 pounds. Next, we want to find the gross axle weight rating, and this is abbreviated GAWR, and this is the amount of weight that can be placed over each axle. For my truck, the front axle is 5,600 pounds and the rear axle is 9,375 pounds. Then you want to find your curb weight. And the curb weight is how much your vehicle weighs without anyone in it or cargo. However, again, the manufacturers do this differently. Chevy, at least in 2014, calculated it by using the standard equipped vehicle without any options, one person in the vehicle weighing 150 pounds, and a tongue weight for a trailer 
they estimated at 10% of the weight of the trailer, and for a fifth wheel or gooseneck, it was 16.7%. So are you confused yet? Well, I am too, but it, it'll make start to make sense here in a minute, I hope. The best way to calculate the curb weight is to take your truck to a scale fully loaded as you would take it camping and see what it weighs. However, you can estimate. First, you can subtract the max weight for occupants and cargo from the GVWR. So the max weight for occupants and cargo is on one of the stickers inside of the door. So in my case, the GVWR was 13,025 pounds minus the 4,952 pounds, which was the max weight for occupants and cargo. And this equals 8,073 pounds using those Chevy parameters. So remember, they said 150 pound person well, I'm 160 pounds, so I have to add 10 pounds onto that weight. And also, they did not include fuel, so uh, diesel is about 7 pounds per gallon, and my truck holds 30 gallons, so that's another 210 pounds I would have to add, assuming a full fuel tank. That increases the curb weight of 8,073 pounds to 8,333 pounds without adding anything else. And remember, they said with no options. So I added a fifth wheel hitch to the truck, which weighs 150 pounds according to the dealer. That increases the curb weight to 8,483 pounds. Then when we're going camping, it is Julie in the passenger seat and stuff, you know, some stuff in the truck as uh, cargo. And so I estimated that to be, I'll be about 200 pounds. And that takes the estimated curb weight to 8,683 pounds. That leaves us about 4,342 pounds of extra weight we can add before we reach our GVWR for the truck. And that's a pretty good amount of weight. Again, the best thing to do is go to a scale, get an accurate weight, and they can also weigh the uh, weight distribution on your axles at some scales, which can be very helpful, especially if you have an axle that can only hold, you know, 3,500 pounds, you wanna make sure you're not overloading that axle. After the curb weight, you need to know the tongue weights for the various hitch positions. So the tongue weight is the downward force of the coupler on the hitch from the, from the trailer, whether it's a conventional trailer, a fifth wheel, or a gooseneck. It's all going to put some pressure on that coupler. On my truck, the tongue weight allowed using a dead weight hitch, so just a bumper hitch, is 500 pounds with a maximum weight of 5,000 pounds of a trailer. Or I could use a weight distribution hitch, which if properly set up, the tongue weight allowance is 2,700 pounds with a max trailer weight of 18,000 pounds. So you see how much difference a weight distribution hitch weight, uh, makes in your towing capacities. In my case, I tow a fifth wheel, and Chevrolet says the max tongue weight for a fifth wheel hitch in my truck is 5,575 pounds with a max trailer weight of 22,300 pounds. But this doesn't mean I can tow a 22,300 pound fifth wheel. That is the max assumed that the curb weight that Chevy provided was of 8,073 8, pounds. Since I have estimated I am more like 8,700 pounds, the amount I can tow is reduced by 600 pounds so really the max tow weight is 21,700 pounds with a fifth wheel tongue weight of 5,425 pounds. Additionally, I have to make sure that I'm not putting too much weight on that rear axle 
In my case, I don't think I have to worry about it because it does have a rating of 9,375 pounds. To be totally safe, however, many experts recommend not exceeding 80% of your towing capacity. And this leaves plenty of wiggle room for mountain driving and trailer brake failures and other things that may happen. Because remember, it's not how much you can safely tow, but also how much you can stop. And that is a critical piece in towing capacity. So if we take that 80% into consideration, my ideal towing capacity would be for the fifth wheel is 17,360 pounds of fifth wheel weight with a tongue weight of 4,340. So as you can see so far, it's not that easy to determine and you can see why many salespeople don't know what every vehicle can tow. Many people add components to their vehicles, making the weight different, as well as items that can change the towing capacity. So it is always better to do your thorough research yourself to determine the ideal towing capacity for your vehicle or one you plan on purchasing. So let's see how I did picking out a fifth wheel compared to my towing capacity of 17,360 pounds with a fifth wheel tongue weight of 4,340. I have a 2019 Arctic Fox 275L. Like the truck, the trailer also has stickers providing information about the weights. One sticker had the cargo capacity, the cargo carrying capacity of the trailer listed as to not exceed 1,607 pounds. The other sticker had the GVWR of 1,300 or 1,000 or 13,400 pounds and an axle rating of 5,800 pounds for each axle. Remember, the curb weight is without extra stuff like water and add-ons. Water is 800 or water is eight pounds per gallon, and we typically travel with about 40, 40 gallons of water on board. So that's an additional 320 pounds we need to add right off the bat. We added solar panels, heavy gauge wiring, an inverter, and some other components that add up to right at 300 pounds. Also, we carry about 500 pounds of stuff in the RV when we are traveling. Just like before, it's best to go to a scale and get it weighed when you're loaded and ready to go as you would travel. But using this estimate, we know that we have added 1,120 pounds to the curb weight. This means we only have about 480 pounds to spare before reaching the GVWR of the trailer. So that just shows how quickly you can overload your trailer and exceed the manufacturer's weight limits. So to figure out if we're good, we'll use the GVWR for the trailer, 13,400 pounds, even though we're not there yet, we could get very close at times. If we take the 16.7 percent of that, as Chevy recommends, we end up with a fifth wheel tongue weight of 2,238 pounds. Our ideal tongue weight was 4,340 pounds, so we are well within range of that tongue weight. Our ideal tow weight worked out to be 17,360, so even if we had the fully loaded Arctic Fox within our GVWR, we would be well within that as well. Lastly, the weight on the rear axle should not be more than 9,375 pounds. Most of the 2,238 pounds of tongue weight will be on that rear axle, as well as some of the weight from the curb weight. So even if half the curb weight was on the rear axle, we would still be well below our uh, axle rating. So I can safely say that we are well within our towing capacity using the Arctic Fox 27.5L and the Chevy 3500 as a combination. I cannot say, however, 
it was the same when we had our Heartland 44 foot cyclone. That we were probably over, I hate to say, but when you don't do your research, you don't necessarily know. Besides going to a scale and getting weighed to make sure you're well within limits, there are also products that can assist you. There's a company called WaySafe that makes hitches with a built-in scale so you can see how much tongue weight is being put on the hitch when you're connected. We did an episode with them on Beyond the Wheel podcast. If you want to take a listen, you just go to your favorite podcast platform and search for Beyond the Wheel podcast and look for the episode with WaySafe. It should be near the top. We did it not too long ago. There are also other safety items you can add to make towing safer. And one of those, like you saw, was the weight distribution hitch can add actually allowable towing weight to your to your uh, hitch. The bottom line is that it is important to take time to work this out before you are on the road and find yourself in a bad situation, or even worse, you have caused a fatality on the road. These heavyweight big vehicles can cause a lot of damage when out of control, so make sure you are towing as safe as possible. And I have heard if you are overweight and you do cause an accident with a fatality, you can actually be charged criminally for that because you were um, you were um, operating outside of the manufacturer's recommended ranges. So just be careful and be safe out there. I would be interested in your comments since this is something I am new to learning to see if you have any tips and tricks that can help in determining your towing capability. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until we see you on the road, safe travels.